Hey guys, Pogo here. Welcome to the next episode of the uh, Bucket Coding Packets mini series, and we're going to look today at the packet play out update sign. Uh, this packet is normally used by Bucket when uh, someone updates a sign. If they create a new sign or if they change the text on a sign, um, then this event would the sorry this packet would be sent to all the other users to alert them that the sign. Uh, value has been changed. We can actually do something really cool with this by sending our own uh, custom sign packets. We can actually change the text of a sign on a per user basis. And the simple example that we're going to do today is we're going to have a sign that will display the user's username or the user's display name on the sign. And the reason why this is so cool is because there really isn't any other way to do this. If you think, uh, you know, regular bucket, there is the ability to get the sign information. You can get the lines that are displayed on a sign and you can uh, change them. But that change applies to all users. So what you can do is you can make signs that display custom information to each user. So stuff like their username or their health or their location, pretty much anything that you can think of that's unique to a user, you can display on their sign. So you place one sign and it's different for every user and no user knows that it's different from everyone else. It's really cool and uh, I'm going to show you a demo after we do this obviously. Um, I don't have two accounts, but I do know that this would work, uh, you know, if you implement it into a plugin. So again, we're going to take a look at, take a look at the packet playout update sign. Again, this packet is sent by bucket whenever a sign is created or updated, and it's responsible for conveying the uh, data, the lines on the sign. So I'm going to create a new instance of this, and I'm just going to call it packet. Um, and you'll notice that it has three parameters. It has a, the world, which important is a net.minecraft.server world, not a not an org.bucket.world. Um, it has a block position, which is a weird Minecraft server class that is pretty similar to the location class that Bucket provides, um, and then this array of iChat base component. And we're going to look at that um, in a little bit. So in order to do this, we need to have these three parameters. And the first one, of course, is the world. Now, the code, the line required to actually get the world is kind of long. So um, first, we're just going to say craft world world equals e dot get clicked block dot get location dot get world and we're going to cast this to craft world and the reason why you can do this is because you'll see that get world will return um, an org dot bucket dot world right there which is an interface and if you look you'll see that craft world implements world so this is a safe cast you can do this and the important thing, the reason why you want to do this, is because you can now call something like world.getHandle. And world.getHandle will return an instance of world server, and world server extends net.minecraft.server.world. And this is the first parameter. The first parameter is a net.minecraft.server world, and that's how we get it. So we're getting the world of the block, casting it to craft world, and then we're getting its handle. So you could, you could of course, include this all on one line, but this one line here is going to get pretty long, so I just want to kind of keep it clean. Next is the block position, I believe. It is called block position. And if you take a look inside of it, you'll see that essentially um, it just takes in uh, a very basic three integers. Uh, of course, it could take three uh, doubles, an entity, a vector, 3D. Uh, it's a vector with three points. Um, and then, you know, there are a bunch of other things here. But we want to um, use this one that takes three ints. And we can uh, very easily just say, and we're going to do it right here, block position posh equals new block position. And we're going to do e dot get clicked block dot get uh, x e dot get clicked block 
sorry, get clicked block dot get y and e dot get clicked block dot get z. This is going to create a new block position using the constructor that contains the x, y, and z coordinates of our block. And that's going to be our second parameter. So again, the first parameter is the world, and the second parameter is the position. So this will just tell the client exactly where, in what world, and at what point the sign is, so that it knows which sign it needs to update. But now we get to this part, and this is where we actually specify the text. And it is an iChat base component. And if we take a look in here, we'll see that iChat base component is an interface. And this essentially represents, of course, a chat component. Uh, and then it just contains all of these pieces of information. It's essentially just text, but it also is JSON formatted text um, because Bucket, or sorry, Minecraft switched over to that. Uh, switched over to use JSON, um, so that's what we have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a method that will convert it, and it's right here, public iChat base component A, and it takes in a string. So we just give it a string, and it'll convert that string into an iChat base component. So again, this is inside of the... Uh, chat serializer class. So this is going to be a new iChat base component array and now we can give the value. So this is going to be chat serializer dot a and you'll notice we want the one that takes a string. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that string whatever we give it and it's going to set that to be the first uh, line. And the string, of course, needs to be in JSON. We're going to look at that in one second. Now, if you'll notice in the constructor here, um, it, we have created a new iChat base component array, whatever. But you'll notice that it accesses these four indices, 0, 1, 2, and 3, which means that this array needs to be of length 4 or more, and only the first four elements matter. So this needs to be the correct length, but you can... Uh, of course include null values. So in this case uh, the first line will be equal to whatever I'm going to make it and then the second, third, and fourth lines are just going to be nothing. So you can use null uh, where you don't want anything to show up but make sure that you have four or you're gonna get an array index out of bounds exception probably. So as I said before we need to stick a JSON string in there um, so in order to do this, uh, I found this great website, minecraftjson.com, and it will allow us to generate the JSON that we need. So uh, first, what you're going to want to do is up here, it should might say something like tell raw or whatever. Just make it say percent %s, or ampersand, or sorry, just uh, percent %s, not ampersand. Um, and then right here, you're going to click on add text, and you're going to choose raw, and then you're going to type in whatever text you want to show up. So I have right here, it says this is a test. And you'll see um, uh, that it will generate the JSON for me. And all I care about is this second piece right here. So it's going to start with this curly brace, and it's going to end with that other curly brace. And this one's simple because all it is is just a text uh, key with whatever you want as the value. Um, although there are some times where it's more complicated. This time it's not. So uh, there we go. It's going to look like that. And once we have it generated, we're going to stick it in here and get an error because we have double quotes. So you need to stick a backslash right in front of every single quotation mark that's part of this JSON string, except for the very first one and the very last one that create the string. This is called escaping, and what that's going to do is backslash... Um, quote backslash quotation mark is just going to be the quotation mark but you have to do that so now if I were to send this packet it would simply well first of all it's in a player interact event so this will uh, work when the player interacts with a sign and I have these checks in here um, uh, so yeah um, and then actually we could even make this shorter we can just do so if it's equal to null or uh, it's 
No, no. Let's just leave it how it was. Okay, so um, what? Have, okay, cool. All right, so we have these checks in here, and then at this point right here, we can assume that uh, the player just clicked on a sign, and now we can update the information. Uh, if you were to include this in an actual plugin, you could have a tick that's constantly running that updates the sign if it needs to, or if when you could just say when the user joins the server, you can send them a packet playout update sign for all of the signs that they need to see. Uh, you would just need to store the locations of all of them. Not too hard. So the first one is going to have the value of this is a test, and the second, third, and fourth lines are going to be nothing. But let's make this a little bit more interesting, and rather than just say this is a test, let's actually um, have it display the username. So this would be e.getplayer.get. We're going to use display name in this case. You could use get name, whatever. Um, but now this is going to set the first line equal to whatever the player's display name is. And that is the real beauty and power of this because it allows us to set the text on a per player basis so that what one player sees can be different than what another player sees. And that's what's so great about packets. So uh, let's go ahead and send these. So craft player e.getplayer.get handle. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I got to import it. Get handle dot, uh, what is it? Player connection dot send packet packet. So we've constructed this packet that will set the first line of the sign that the user clicks on to their display name. And then finally, we just go ahead and send it. So I'm going to export this, and it should be good to go at this point. I'm going to start up the server, and I updated the plugin.yml so that it refers to the custom sign class instead of the particles class. So I'm going to also fire up Minecraft so that I can join and demonstrate this. <clears throat> okay, server started up with no issues. That's always a good thing. And now I can go into multiplayer and connect. Um, all right, so uh, let's go grab a sign. All right, I have a sign, and let's go right over here, sure. And I'm going to put the sign down, and I'm not going to put any message on it. Uh, so this is just an empty sign, but as soon as I interact with it, the name immediately changes to, say, Pogo Stick 29 and the real important thing to note here is that I didn't update the sign itself. I sent a packet as if the sign were updated. So if another user connected right now, um, you know, let's say that the person was named hello, the sign would be empty for them, but as soon as they interact with the sign, it would say hello. And if we're both standing next to each other and looking at it, it would look different for each of us it would have our own names on it, but we would have no way of telling that it looks different because it just looks like a regular old sign. There's nothing strange about it. So that's the real power of packets, is that you can sort of trick the client into thinking that certain conditions exist when they really don't. Like you can trick the client into thinking that this sign says Pogo Stick 29 when in reality it's actually empty. So this is just a little glimpse into the power of uh, using packets and creating your own packets. So, as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more packets and some more coding. Bye for now.